Lakes are water bodies created naturally or due to anthropogenic effort. The same can be said in terms of preservation of them. Even though both try, the lake still perishes. There sits a pond heron on a bounty of water hyacinths or echornia. These are macrophytes, aquatic plants. They are directly involved in maintaining the food chain in this ecosystem. The vegetation provides shoreline habitat and cover for reptiles, amphibians, birds and small mammals. They provide the perfect collation of terrestrial and aquatic life. They are covered with macroinvertebrates, which wait for the fingerlings from the fish nursery and other small fish. The macroinvertebrates prey on the zooplanktons which consume nutrients directly from macrophytes. After the macroinvertebrate feast, they are then hunted by small fish, who are then preyed upon by larger ones caught by birds. The aquatic plant beds are also important fish spawning and nursery areas, and play a major role in the status of a lake's fishery. This is Rachinahali, one of the few lakes where fish and fishermen thrive. This lake is filled with macrophytes like water hyacinths, jambu and alternanthera. Macrophytes affect nutrient cycling through transference of chemical elements from sediment to water by both active and passive processes. Limiting nutrients released by macrophytes like phosphorus and nitrogen are rapidly used by microalgae and bacteria. In addition, several species of macrophytes produce an elevated percentage of refractory matter, basically fibrous material that is relatively slow to decompose. Thus, they also contribute to a return of carbon to sediment. The regulation of nutrients is an important factor for the ecosystem as increase in phosphorus, carbon and nitrogen can lead to an increase in the biological demand of the river. This can cause fish death because of the low percentage of oxygen. High concentrations of nitrogen and phosphorus cause algal blooms that are highly toxic colonies affecting fish, zooplankton, small mammals, birds and humans. It's been eight months after the skyscraping smoke cloud vanished over Bellingham. However, the lake is still the same. Bellingham retains its macrophyte filters, but the human stress has turned the toxic blooms to bloom even further into carbonic foam which burns the eyes and chokes the lungs of animals and humans alike. Human effluence from gated societies directly polluting the water body with sewage and other effluence from factories choking the river with foam. The chances of a lake's death due to macrophytes is a gradual and natural process rather than the rampant destruction or poisoning of the lake due to human activity. The urban strain is not only in terms of waste, but also the aesthetic that it brings macrophytes. They are uprooted for concrete pavements and for so-called clear water activities. For Bangalore to be independent in terms of water and not fire, it needs these magnificent plants and also less human strain on these lakes.